Um, on July 19th, 1989, United Airlines Flight 232 crash landed in Sioux City, Iowa. The crew did the best that they could, but it's difficult to work with failed hydraulics and busted engines. And 112 people died. The remaining 174 would walk away in pain and fear. And the effect of that is almost incalculable. I mean, people go on to have unseen impacts and will live lives that many of us would never know about. And many of us, I'm sure, probably all of us, have never been in a plane crash and wouldn't be able to identify with that kind of fear. After the, after the crash, you know, they, they salvaged it and tried to figure out what the cause was. And turned out that it was from a small fan disk. It's about this large. And there was a fissure, a crack, running from the center to the outside. And in the heat and pressure of the flight, it burst, shrapnel and debris flew out, causing a series of explosions, horrible chain events leading to the ultimate crash. What I hate about this story is that that fan disk and its crack had been noted in other pre-flight checks. It had been noticed, it had been noted, and it had been marked as being fit to fly. In essence, it was ignored. People decided it was good for one more flight, one more flight every time, until the last time it really was one more flight. When I think about this story, you know, I like to extrapolate. That's, <laughs> I'm a scientist, that's kind of what we do. And when you think about cracks and flaws, like this was one very small piece of equipment, easily replaced. It would have only taken a couple of hours and not much money. And under the wrong conditions, without the right attention and without the right effort, it lost a bunch of lives. How many of us have been in a classroom, a business meeting, a phone call, a relationship in which you felt like the other person wasn't giving it their best, wasn't giving a whole lot of attention? Raise your hands high. Yeah. Look around. No, keep them up. Look around. I want you to understand. We think about these things as being much bigger. A plane crash, a super extreme example. Um, but then, you know, a little bit bigger, maybe uh, a war, a bad business deal. So, uh, to use an example, Walmart not treating its employees very well. Um, political strife. There are so many examples, but we fail to think of it very frequently in terms of the everyday. To give some examples, blaming, negativity, prejudice, miscommunication. These are the cracks and flaws of our society. Under the wrong conditions, these result in really awful things. You see them every day, because the news won't stop talking about it. It's pretty real. And so, you know, I'm on this quest, as I think many of us try to be, to eliminate them to try and make them go away, to make the world a better place. But it's a really easy thing to talk about making the world a better place. It's much more difficult to actually measurably, actionably do it. One way to look at it is it's not up to me. I'm not the right person. Uh, someone else will take care of it. One more flight, right? And if you think of it that way, if you think of it as being someone else will take care of it, it's not the right circumstances, I'm not the right person, I'm not good enough, someone else will do it, nothing changes. Everything's the same. Horrible things are going to continue to happen, wars will continue to be fought, people will continue to die, planes will continue to crash. But if we do everything in our power to make it better, there is a chance, a really, really slim chance, that it gets better. Again, really easy to talk about. I'm sure some of you are thinking, like, well, easy for you to say. Yeah, it is easy for me to say. Words. <laughs> but think of it this way. Uh, if you just live by your commitments every day, and I really mean every day, like you have to wake up every moment, like Kevin was saying earlier, and recommit, remind yourself of positivity and the things that you can do to be better, that is one option. A lot of people will ask, like, what can I do as an individual? What can I do to make things better? Because there's a whole lot of big problems out there, and I don't know how to handle them. I don't even know how to get involved. How many of you have a smartphone? Yeah. And if you don't have a smartphone, there should be someone sitting within like six feet of you who has one. So turn to that person and be like, hey, can I borrow your phone? Pull it out. Not right now. <laughs> Go on social media and just start typing in things that you care about. Environment, leadership, religion, 
get in touch with an organization, a person, start talking about the things that you care about because if you continue to look away, if you continue to market as being fit for flight, more crashes are going to happen. And that is not the world that I want to live in. And sometimes, you know, people will say, even after that, like, but, you know, what's that going to do? What is talking about it? What's a protest? What's a march? What's one charity event going to do? It's not about one. It's about all of us. There are two things that I want you to leave today with. One of those is figure it out. When you see a problem, don't just say, wow, I don't know what to do about it. Say, okay, here's a problem. What can I do to fix it? What can I do to make it better? What can I do to leave my mark so that someone else can carry the torch after I'm gone? One easy way is social media, getting in touch with people, figuring out what's available. I mean, Google has become a verb. That wasn't a thing 20 years ago. <laughs> you can go online and find out who is working on it and get in touch with those people. Step two, one is greater than zero. A lot of people will look at a huge problem, and like I said, they'll think this is way too big for me. One person is not enough. There's no way I could do this alone. Fortunately, you don't have to do it alone. Turn around, unless you're in the back, look forward, uh, and look at everyone else who's in this audience. I'm serious, some of you who are not. Yeah. Someone in here cares about the same things that you do. Someone in here, maybe you're sitting right next to him, believes in the same things as you, wants to make a difference, doesn't know how. Get in touch with that person and figure out what you can do together. Or, if you prefer, go home to the people you already know Go to an organization you already work with. Figure out what you can do. Take this step, because it's one thing to say, I'm not good enough, but that's a zero-sum approach. Because then you're just stewing, self-pity, whining, doesn't change anything. But if you just take that first step and continue to take first steps, you'll go from zero to 100 real quick. <laughs> and actually, there's a funny, I don't know how many of us have watched um, the old animated Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer um, movie, but there's a song in there that I like to think about when I'm, when I'm discussing this kind of thing. Um, I don't know if some of you may remember it. Just put one foot in front of the other, and soon you'll be walking out the door. <laughs> yeah. It starts with the first step, and once you've completed that first step, you take another first step. And soon, hopefully, if we all work together, you really will be walking out the door. Thank you.